Hi folks, Dr. Nimji here to introduce Humber River Hospital's protected code blue strategy for the pandemic. So what we want to do today is show you and highlight the differences from how you might have handled a code blue before. And it's important that you guys know that we had every stakeholder that was required, including all of the disciplines, come together to put this process together. And it's also really important that you know that the guiding principles were number one, staff safety, number two, PPE preservation, ensuring just the right number of people that need to be in the room are and that they're wearing the appropriate PPE, and number three, that we have a code marshal ensuring that we're doing everything safely and according to our process. So you'll notice here that nurse Cynthia is coming in to check in on her patient and she notices that he is unresponsive. In the usual code blue fashion, she would activate the code blue and start chest compression. In today's COVID crisis, we are going to ask nurse Cynthia to leave the room immediately activate the code blue and don appropriate airborne PPE once the code marshal has arrived. Once the code blue has been activated, you'll notice that the code marshal is bringing the code blue cart as well as the code PPE cart to the outside of the patient's room. So as you can see now, the, the responders have assembled outside the patient's room. The code marshal has checked that they have donned the appropriate airborne precautions. They are wearing head covering, a fa full face shield, N95 respirators, gown, and gloves that extend beyond the cuff they can then enter the room safely. Keep in mind these PPEs may change in the future and you need to follow the code marshal's checklist to ensure you are appropriately donned before entering the patient room. You'll notice that now that the first responder has donned airborne PPE appropriately, they are bringing the defibrillator as well as the drug tray from the code blue cart onto the PPE cart to roll it into the room. You will notice now that the team has assembled inside the patient room, the door is closed, that the monitors are being applied, no bag ventilation is being done, instead passive oxygenation is being allowed to happen, and we will follow the ACLS protocol with certain modifications. I will reiterate, no bagging of the patient, early airway management as appropriate, and minimizing door opening during the code. You will notice that chest compressions are now being applied. Once the team is ready to manage and secure the airway, chest compressions will be stopped. Video laryngoscopy will be the first attempt in order to minimize possible aerosolization. You will notice that at the conclusion of the code blue, the responders will doff appropriately inside the patient room all of their airborne PPE except for the N95 respirator and the head covering. Once the responders are outside the room, you'll notice that they will doff their N95 respirator with the code marshal watching. You will notice that while the code is underway, outside the door, the code marshal is at the ready. There is a runner in droplet contact precautions available to pass any necessary supplies into the room, as well as other runners to go get said supplies. Once the patient is ready for transport to the ICU location, the code marshal is ensuring that the appropriate staff transporting the patient is donned in contact droplet precautions. They can then leave with the patient. The code marshal's responsibilities after the conclusion of the code blue also include ensuring that another code PPE cart has been ordered, as well as the supplies returned and appropriately processed. We hope that this video has helped highlight the differences between the regular code blue and our new code blue during this COVID pandemic.